The MTG Podcast is a virtual space for women and men in the tech and creative industries. Tune in as we put it all on the table, sharing authentic life truths as we sustain and empower each other in search of our tribe. We're more than a designer. We're more than our name badge. We're more than the work we produce. Welcome to the More Than Graphics Podcast. We're We're that that tribe. tribe. Hello and welcome. Um, oh my goodness, this has got to be like 2022. We're really doing it, Cicely. <laughs> I know. We're full effect. Month number two, month number one for some of us. But uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. It's really month number one. <laughs> I, mean, I like that a lot. Um, if you don't already know who we are, I am Danielle. And I'm Cicely. And the two of us make up this amazing dynamic duo called the More Than Graphics Podcast. Um, So if you don't already know, and if you don't already kind of catch a feel, um, we're about this tribe of creating virtual space for women in tech and women women in the creative industry. And I think it's really fun because over the past, what, this is season four? Um, Mm -hmm. Over the past four seasons that we've been able to put together the show, we just come across amazing stories and amazing people. And so I'm really excited to bring on um, this special guest today because we're going to talk a little deeper about prioritize. And I've got all kinds of things to talk about. But, you know, (laughs) Cicely, we kind of talked about earlier in the previous episodes about how taking priority for ourselves is so important. But we have a lot of things kind of happening in this month that also kind of helps us unpack that a little bit more. Um, Specifically, if you're um, if you're all about holidays, this month is Black History Month which is super exciting and important for me because this is kind of the world's recognition to celebrate us. Um, But we should be doing that, I'll say, 365, not 29 out of 28 days. So um, I think it's really important that we also kind of step into the space of performance over purpose or this purpose over performance, if you will, the other way around. Um, I am really into that space right now as I talk about prioritizing things for my life. Cicely, how about you? Um, so yeah, I'm definitely over, um, I'm definitely into, not over, mm-hmm. doing the action and not just talking about something. Um, like you said, it's definitely making sure that you're putting action behind the things that you talk about. So I think that's, we talk about that a lot. It's very important to be a woman of your word or to really just, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to support something, if you're going to promote something, you have to stand behind that and, you know, be about it, as they say. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I am practicing uh, one really cool thing, which would be um, I'm doing more of a compliment thing. I saw this really cool challenge on Facebook in a Facebook group. I can't remember the exact name of the person who did it. So I'll, I'll find you and I'll tag you, I promise. Um, but she literally is giving a compliment to Black women all month long. Unknown Black women all month long. I love and that. I think that's super cool. It, it, she even does it in this like, little cute little square and she tags them and then they kind of tar- carry the Black, uh, not Black, the blank template and then pass it on to the next person. So I think that's really cool that that kind of challenge to step outside of our comfort zone a little bit is being a more proactive thought um, for 2022, whether it is Black History Month or any other month out of the year, you know, supporting women is such a huge step um, for a lot of people. And being supported is also a huge step for a lot of women. So it's not just the giving in, but also receiving that and and knowing and accepting and, and embracing that as well. So um, shout out to all the people celebrating all the things this month. I'm sure there's a slew of social media holidays that I'm not going to go through at this point. Um, <laughs> but, you know, happy love month. Um, shout out to Cicely. She just celebrated her birthday. Say another now. Yay! Um, all the things. I so love my podcast sister. I'm so glad that she's a part of this journey with me. That so. was a priority. <laughs> 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 that was my priority for this week was celebrating my birthday (laughs) (laughs) did you get to do anything special or did it was just like you know no it was low key and I think the older I've gotten and not even like to say like I'm old but just it doesn't I don't have to be on the go all the time like I'm on the go so much already that going out is like not even exciting for me anymore like you know what's exciting for me like staying home like oh no we're staying home like that's exciting for me so I got to stay home 
we're re we're, we are re-watching that's a tongue twister game of thrones so this is like Ooh. the second time we're watching it and we're into it and i'm i've got all the commentary my husband's tired of hearing me talk i'm like see see that's the moment i knew that so and so was about to do this and that's why i didn't like them anymore see that's why i i don't like i knew i didn't like her for some reason so that's what we're doing <laughs> that's what we're currently that was my birthday night that's what that consists of we were just watching before we hopped on the podcast and i was like see mm -mm, i knew i didn't like him and i still don't like him <laughs> <laughs> that was me probably two weeks ago watching the latest episode of Discovery of Witches. If you follow mm. that show at all on AMC, oh, I've heard about gosh. it. I haven't watched it. Super cute, super cool vibes. But I mean, it was one of those I was screaming at the TV. Like I literally, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even do that anymore. Like that is so like 20, 2019. Why are we doing this in twenty twenty two? So because we're invested. <laughs> I think that on Star Trek Discovery though, like I'm like. What? Why would you do that? What, what are you doing? <laughs> See, I love we're it. invested. It's the investment they have. They have lured us in, and we're we're there. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love this. Yes. Okay. So without further ado, we gotta get we gotta go on to our our wonderful uh, speaker for prioritize, um, Molly Hicks. And I just let you believe you have her bio. Yes, ma'am. Let me pull it up here. All right. There's so much light. I'm like, I can't see. I'm blinded by all this light that's happening. Um, <laughs> all right. So Molly Hicks, she, her, is a brand strategy badass and founder of the self-named brand strategy and design micro agency that helps busy AF entrepreneurs make shit happen. I love her intro. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get through it. Sorry, I'm trying to be professional. I'm like, yes. I want to be like, yes, the whole time. So look, we're going to start time. over. Totally we're going to start <laughs> over because I got to give it its due, right? Molly Hicks, she, her, is a brand strategy badass and founder of the self-named brand strategy and design micro agency that helps busy AF entrepreneurs make shit happen. Her out of the box cookie cutter free strategy helps business owners build sustainable systems that not only grow their businesses, but also make sense of their unique way of thinking. When she's not working with entrepreneurs to revolutionize their fields and flip what's normal on edge, you'll find Molly at home with her family. If she's not out catching Pokemon with her toddler or riding the motorcycle or riding the motorcycle with her partner, Steven, she's most likely stinking hippopotamus like amongst the bubbles in the bath with some Moscato in hand. I love it. Welcome, Molly. <laughs> that was the best thing I've ever read. <laughs> that was great. I love uh, it. it. I mean, if you've watched Frasier, the hippopotamus thing is a reference. So yes, I totally <laughs> got it. Honestly, I love saying that. Everybody's like, well, what do you do for you? And I'm like, I sink hippopotamus like amongst the bubbles. Like I love and it. And you Pokemon Go. You had me at Pokemon Go. Oh, Man. it's you like I don't think people understand the level to which my four and a half year old has committed. That's awesome. To Pokemon Go. Like I had to go to physical therapy today and he had to go with me, which is a joy for any parent trying to relax during physical therapy. Um right. And he is there jumping around with his iPad in hand, screaming at the top of his lungs I love because it. he caught a Pokemon. The therapist, let, let him I don't be even happy. think I got anything. Like it's for a neck thing, so I have to massage or whatever. And I don't even think I got therapy because she was dying the whole time. Oh. Like, <laughs> like, I'm never bringing you again to this. I love, I love it. it. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So. Um, so for people who like want to know a little bit like behind the scenes, kind of what you do, mm -hmm. we talk a little bit more about, you know, brand strategy and things along those lines, being a micro agency owner. Yes. For mm -hmm. these things. I'm so raw. This is my love language. So I, I want to kind of give a more illustrative picture of what your kind of day to day life is like. Can you give us a little snapshot? Yes, I am literally talking to people all day long, helping them make decisions is like the synopsis, <laughs> but like in a, a more illustrative way, um, I help people make intentional decisions on how they're going to grow their business in a way that would make sense, not only for them and that feels authentic to them and in their integrity, but it also helps connect their ideal client to how they can be helped. Like, cause everybody's like, well, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to do this. I don't know how to do this. Like they, they copy and paste all this bullshit everywhere. Like, let me take that template and not change it. And then 
be like, why isn't things, why aren't things working? Why aren't things working? And so by the time they get like completely and utterly done and over and they're over the hustle, they're over all of that. That's when they come to me and they're like, fix it. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> so our joke is that I'm the unfucker of the whole thing. Like <laughs> yes. people come to me and they're like, can you just unfuck what I did? Yeah. I don't know what I did. Fix it. Yeah. And give me the so hard that's... reset button. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's like, I, people, I like people will come to me and there's like 14 fonts on one page. And I'm like, how, we're going to, we're going to go with how is the question here today. So, you know, like it's that, but it's also, you know, helping people unlock what's within them. And like mm. part of my job is playing the half therapist, half coach, um, you know, and unlocking things. Cause a lot of the people I work with are neurodivergent. And so we're seriously like a lot of my people come to me, not knowing they're neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. They come to me cause they're like, you're talking in ways that I make sense to me. Cause I, cause I'm neurodivergent. <laughs> I have Tourette's. I squeak like a velociraptor baby, like I shake like a chihuahua, you know, like all the different things. And so they're like, you sound like me, you, you are struggling the way that I'm struggling. And so like, we'll start talking and I'm like, yeah, you, you need to like follow this TikTok account. Just, just reflect on these TikToks for a while, you know, uh, or just unlocking different ways for them to think. And then they're like, I didn't know this was, I didn't know this was a thing. And then all of a sudden they're a whole new person. We have a whole new business model, new brand, like, it's kind of like watching <laughs> most of them are queer too, which is funny. So not the, not funny. They're queer because I am too, but like funny in the fact that they're like coming out of the closet again in a different way. Like mm -hmm. there's yeah. coming out queer and then there's coming out as neurodivergent, which is another hassle of itself. So it's like a double, double closet thing. So I love this. Oh my gosh. Like, where have you been all my life? I think that, I think <laughs> we should be friends a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I love this. And I love the fact that you kind of depict this whole, I, the whole concept of being neurodivergent as, you know, kind of walk again, coming out. It's almost like, you know, you're experiencing a whole new thing um, yeah. once you actually put the pieces together. Right. So for, I love the fact that you literally, literally talk about, you know, unfucking things. I'm going to say that out loud. I think it's really, really important because <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that if they keep spinning that same wheel over and over again, that's what they're doing. They're just tightening yeah. up that noose. And so sometimes we need a person to step in and tell us, hey, this is not the way. Like, you know, going <laughs> old school labyrinths, like this is not right. the way, like all the things. <laughs> So I really love the fact that you say that out loud and tell people, no, okay. this is how I can help you. Like, this is how I can step in. Um, yeah. And having someone that can call you on your shit is so important too. Yes. And I mean, I have someone that calls me on my shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot be my, I can sort of be my own strategist, but I need, still need someone to tell me mm -hmm. that I'm on the wrong path too. And um, <laughs> that happened to me this week. Like, I, she, she's like throwing my own advice at me. I was like, how dare you? You are being so mean right now, <laughs> but that's the job that I do for everybody else. And you know, it's so important to have that because you're just going to keep going down this path that is inauthentic. That is not within your integrity. Like I had many clients that were like, I have to go do a live, you know, I have to go post on social media. And I'm like, if you feel like that, then why the hell are you doing it? Like, what are you doing to yourself? Are you gaming anybody? Are you just spending mindless time doing that? Like, there's a difference between being fed in your soul by coming live and talking about your thing. And then there's dredging and dragging your feet and like just showing up at half at like, that's not a thing. We're not going to show up half-assed. That doesn't help you. Like, and then, so when you're like, okay, but if your people are on Reddit, why are you on Instagram? Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, so you don't like Facebook, but you like Discord? Do that. Right. You know, show up where your people are. Like, And so, like, mm -hmm. it's just a very different style when you're like, okay, then don't do that. People are, like, so, like. What do you mean? Don't do the thing that I heard on that extremely famous person's thing or read in that famous person's book. What do you mean? Don't do that. And right. It's like, 
just because, you know, Johnny Depp has done some crazy things, but you don't see me doing what he's doing. Like, I, like what, what the, what are you going to do? Like, you know, like I, <laughs> funny, you I get him from the same hometown. Hmm. Oh, really? Hmm. The level of crazy that comes from that place. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't know. I just like was realizing today, like I, I love Harry Potter, not, not JK Rowling, but I love Harry Potter. Yes. Same. And I was like, I need to do a business class on how your Harry Potter house affects like how you run your business. Because truth be told, I'm a Slytherin and many people do not like that about me. And I'm like, well, tough shit. Um, hence the Slytherin <laughs> part of me. Um, but like I was thinking about it and I was like, all those traits that you have like inherently in things that you identify with, mm -hmm. they affect your business decisions. They affect your strategy. So anyway, prioritizing yourself is love the goal that. there, guys. Gonna... Oh my gosh. You better <laughs> write that down before I do. Cause I really love that idea. And I love the idea of sorting <laughs> houses and all the things. So I'll come back to that in, in Halloween. You can do it now. I'm going to okay. do that for Halloween. <laughs> it's fair game. <laughs> yep. I love this. I love the fact that you help people in this way. And I think when you, we start thinking about it in this um, kind of sense of um, community that you're, you know, kind of creating and invoking in a lot of ways, but you're also being real. Like you said, having people call you on your shit, that's so important because when we're in our own echo chambers, a lot of times we don't see that. Mm -mm. We don't see the parts where we could do more or we don't see the parts where we need to step back. Um, we don't see those. So having that extra set of eyes such as you <laughs> would be amazing. And I think people need to take advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's some things like I find myself a lot of times having extremely difficult decisions. We'll put it that way. Sure. Um, a lot of my clients are white. You I mean, I'm in Nebraska. Okay. And, <laughs> and, um, we have a lot of hard decisions because it's like, okay, I realize that, but that like, we, you can't, you can't just like, no, we're not going to have a catalog of white blonde people on your website. Like we're not doing that. And, you know, like having conversations and challenging people's biases and prioritizing like everyone, <laughs> like let, let's make sure we're showcasing everyone, um, you know, like, and talking about that and being like, okay, well, who's your client? All right. Are they doing that because people don't feel like they can resonate with your brand? Like, are we making sure that everybody you want to serve is present? And half the time, nobody even knows that they're doing it because they're so oblivious. They are. They welcome the conversations. Like half the time, I'm like, can you please put your pronouns on your website? Like just like in your signature block. Can you just like do these little things? Can you please, you know, make certain statements on your website? You know, like. So people know, like, if they're going to look for that, they're going to make sure that you're a safe place for them. Like, pl please, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, we have a lot of conversations and like uh, uh, significantly in the past two years, we've had more hard conversations and prioritizing those things for me and making sure I say something is important to me because if my brand mm -hmm. is being authentic and within my integrity, <laughs> I cannot go out and be like, yeah, sure. We'll totally build that website. That's totally against everything I believe in. No, yeah. that's, you know, and it, there's, <laughs> I saw on Facebook the other day, somebody was like, this guy posted on, like, I've worked so hard on his social media and he posted something and it's completely offensive to everybody. I'm like, then why are you working with him? Like mm -hmm. everybody else was like, well, you can't control your clients. And I'm like, oh no, that is not the question you are to be asking at this point. Right. The question is, are you working with people and you prioritize? And I keep trying to say prioritize, guys. Uh, prioritizing your own values when you work. And is that a part of your business? Because it should be. I have a whole blog post about neutrality and business is bullshit. Um, because you can't be. You can't be neutral. Right. I love that. I love, I absolutely love that. And I think more, again, more women in tech and women in, I think women in, in the entrepreneurial scale period really need to hear that voice more. Um, just because a lot of times we're either, you know, shut out, put out things along those lines, or we're not able to express our values 
or the opposite. A lot of times women in the corporate sector sometimes feel like they can't express those values because of where they work, because of the environment that's around them when they're in their normal nine to five. And, un and subconsciously, they bring those same values home, believe it or not. And sometimes mm -hmm. that can also leak and spread into other areas of their life. So, mm-hmm. And I, so I don't know if I put this in my bio, but I'm, I was in the Air Force. I'm retired Air Force. So Woo! I actually worked in an environment that was not ideal a lot of times. Um, and so I definitely bring like the knowledge of like, oh, that was really shitty. How could we have not done that? Oh, we could have done this. You know, and like I've had great supervisors. Don't get me wrong. I've had some great supervisors in the military. I also saw a lot of like crazy bullshit. Um, yeah. But like a lot of that, a lot of my story from that, is, it affects how I do things. It's actually how I learned my skill set is they would like hand me things to be like, unfuck this program. <laughs> we ignored it and we we're getting inspected in two weeks. And, you know, mm -hmm. so that's kind of how I learned how to do what I do. Um, but a lot of that like negative, weird biases that people have, like just that unconscious part was very much apparent. And so it's very much something I bring to the table because I realize how like we don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's something I control as a parent too. I prioritize making sure my kid doesn't become a asshole out of, you know, accidental <laughs> teaching and things. And so like the moment that I was like on the right path was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Um, we were at a hotel and he was talking about Mickey Mouse. We had just come home from Disney World and he was like, Mom, Mickey and Minnie. Minnie's his girlfriend, right? And I was like, Yeah. And he goes, And Daisy's Donald's girlfriend. I was like, Yeah. He goes, But what about Pete? And I was like, Pete doesn't have anybody. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He goes, Does he have a boyfriend? And at that moment, I was like, Oh, he's picking up on everything. Oh, like I was like, oh, it's working. <laughs> but it's Very like those working. those types of things. Like you don't think about consciously, but you're trying to teach them, but you don't know they're working. And then they say something cute, adorable, and sweet like that. Like mm -hmm. it was just like, okay. I He's not going forward with the biases I grew up with. He's he's getting yeah. his own journey. So like it's those are some good telltale signs, Molly. Those are awesome. I like that. Yes. Um, I really kind of want to refocus just a little bit on you know prioritize, and I love that yeah. you express a lot of it, uh, a lot of the things that are important to you. Um, how alignment happens a lot with your clients and the things that you personally are passionate about. Um, so I really am kind of curious on how you define priorities for yourself. Mm. I was thinking about this before I came out. I was like, oh, we're going to talk about this. Um, <laughs> and um, one of the things I struggled for a really, 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 really long time uh, with boundaries because I didn't know what they were. I, honestly, it was just ignorance of what the heck a boundary was that I could have them like that they're things that you should have and they're not bad. Um, and so two years ago I got a business or, or a, you know, she's a business life coach. And, um, and she was like, boundaries, get some essentially was the conversation. And so that's kind of where I started realizing like, Oh, Oh, I set a priority. I get to create boundaries. I get to do those things this is me, not you guys. This is me. Uh, and so I started restru I literally like blew up most of the things like, Oh, I don't need that anymore. And I just restructured everything business life. We started putting like, I'm not allowed to do business stuff after four o'clock because I'm a workaholic. I, I love what I do. I can't like turn it off. The strategy brain does not turn off. <laughs> It just keeps going. So I had to like prioritize my family in a very like obvious intentional way because it's not that I don't love them. It's not that I don't care for them. I just couldn't shut off my brain from working. And I had to physically like silence the phone because <laughs> 
I just couldn't. Um, so prioritizing that, prioritizing like my kiddo's neurodivergent to prioritizing him and how he functions and making sure he's getting all the support he needs. I figured out I was neurodivergent when I was 24. That's a hard pill to swallow at 24 because the whole time of like my whole life, I just thought I was weird for no reason. Like, I mean, how many people go around shrieking like a velociraptor? Not many. Um, but, you know, obvious it was not. Um, so, you know, I didn't want that for him. So we prioritize making sure that. So over the course of the past year, I realized I need, I need a day. And so I now have what I call Molly Mondays. It is my business or my personal, whatever the heck, get the things waxed, get my hair done, do whatever. Like that's my day. Um, so I write my own blog posts. I, you know, prioritize my own workflows and optimizing my own system and creating products and writing my own copy. All of those things happen on that day. Occasionally, so if somebody like really doesn't have any other availability and I like them enough, they are allowed to have some time, but you know, um, but yeah, so I have Molly Mondays and that's how I prioritize me. Um, and then I still, to this day, do not, I try not to work after hours. Sometimes my assistant is in a different time zone. <laughs> um, and her schedule is crazy because her mm -hmm. and her husband flip flop. Uh, hours. So occasionally she does need input from me after hours and that I will make an exception for because, you know, she can't work if she doesn't have directions. <laughs> I want. I'm down. I but, love yeah. this. I yeah. actually love, I'm going to take a, I'm really going to take a note from your book because oh. that is something that I am striving also for myself as well. How do I dive a little bit deeper for myself, but still do good production or good work. And yeah. that comes from taking a step back and taking the extra time sometimes to just Okay. And I, and I think that's what's been happening for me in, in January into February recently. And I've had this cool surge of getting ahead and yeah. I'm, I'm riding that wave right now. And I'm just like, yes, productivity is up. I'm doing stuff. I'm getting, I'm moving yeah. forward and I'm starting to, you know, feel that gusto, that positive energy of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll. So I think that came from this exact strategy, this exact strategy mm -hmm. of taking specific days where you do nothing but mm -hmm. a specific thing and just kind of honing in on that goal. So I hope more women out there, whether you're in the corporate sector or on the entrepreneurial side of that, are taking note of that. Um, the big girl pants are on, mm -hmm. and we're specifically taking this extra yes. time to allocate certain amount of energy on one or two certain things, and that's it. Um, we don't do that enough because we are told that we have to wear 50 hats at one time and wipe di and change diapers and we also are told to um hold all the work for sometimes our predecessors our predecessors who are usually male and we have to uphold all the things for them as well as uphold things for ourselves um i just feel like there's so many things that our environments sometimes derogatory derogatorily tell us um based on whatever it is that we're doing and we have to kind of again take the priority uh, of ourselves mm -hmm. above everything else. So I really appreciate your feedback on that, Molly. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to give it. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one other priority thing that I do, um, which took a lot of learning over the past couple months, years, uh, is I prioritize organizing my calendar. Like it's simple. It's not a really complicated, but like, okay. I have this project. I need to physically schedule the time to work on that on my calendar. If it's not on my calendar, it might be in Asana. It, it's probably there. It's probably even got a due date. But if it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. Um, and that, like, because I physically need to see, oh, I have zero capacity. Like, I have to physically see, okay, yes, I need to work on this. And we're going to have six calls. And we're going to do this but I have to like map it out physically. Otherwise I'm like, sure, I'll take you on. I gotcha. And then I'm sitting there with like 50 brand redesigns and six websites due on the same day. And I'm like, hmm, this is a bad idea. Not so good. 
WTF? She's like reading my mind. You guys don't even understand. (laughs) Well, there's that. And there's the prioritizing actually minimize, like breaking down the things. I am notorious. It's the running joke that I'll be like, I'm building a website this week, guys. And they're like, really? You're going to build a whole website this week? With everything else you got going on. Yep, doing the whole thing. And then there's me at midnight and three o'clock in the morning because I can't sleep because I'm thinking of all the things that I forgot to do. So I've gotten better. I'm not perfect. I never claim to be perfect. But I've gotten much better about being like, okay, we're going to write all the copy and map everything out first. And then I'm going to do wireframes. And then I'm going to build it once we agree that that's what it's actually going to look like. Cause otherwise I'm making it, I'm spending 18 hours coding it. And then you're going to tell me you don't like it. And then I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> so, no, there's nothing worse than wasted time. I'm telling no, you nothing worse than wasted time. And energy. Awful. So yes. Prioritizing schedules. Very important. <laughs> Sorry, I'm always like trying to like hit mute, not hit mute. Oh. Um, so I'm like, wait, wait. But um, I love how you mentioned like one theme that we have with prioritizing is that like it's a lot of self care that goes into that too. So it's mm-hmm. kind of taking care of yourself and like taking a moment to kind of come down and and really just focus. So like you mentioned in some of the tools that you kind of use to prioritize your life, prioritize your career, and you know prioritize all the things that you need to do. A lot of that is putting yourself first so that you can actually be well enough, be, you know, of sound body and mind to do these things. And I think women, especially moms, especially, um, and just, I mean, I think it's actually a thing with kind of any marginalized group is that we are so focused on doing things for everyone else. Like it's, it's an expectation culturally, um, you know, based on gender, it's an expectation that you have to do these things. If you're a woman, you have to do these things. You know, if you have family obligations, like these are like, we're kind of pigeonholed into those things. So I'm really glad that you mentioned that, you know, that kind of self-care that we always talk about. That's like the the basis of our <laughs> of our podcast. And we're not talking about the business side. We are talking about working on yourself and taking care of yourself. So I think that's so important to um, for everyone to realize with prioritize that it starts with you. Like you have to prioritize mm-hmm. what's going to make you happy. What's, you know, what makes you, what, um, like you kind of mentioned like your passion, what fuels you in your business. You, you have to prioritize those things so that you can be happy so that you can be in the space to create, you can be in the space to, you know, give so much of yourself to other people while also having to divvy out pieces of you to everyone else. So I really, I'm just so glad that you mentioned that. And I was taking notes. So if you see my art running joke is like, I'm Kermit the Frog on the typewriter and you see my little hands flying. So that's me. (laughs) So when you see me looking away and the hands are flying, that's what's going on. Yeah, so, and it's, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's, gets me into another thing. I'm a bit woo-woo. I'm like woo-woo light. Okay. Not like full woo, woo-woo light. I got the tarot cards. I got the oils. I'm not to crystals yet. We're getting there. Um, but one of my clients is a shaman. So it's been a journey of like learning through her and like so, so many things. I was like, the world makes so much sense now. Um, and just like, anyway, I could go on a tangent forever. Um, The point is (laughs) I had to learn like the cues of when I was energetically tapped out because I didn't know that I had like communal voice on because like my entire life I was like hearing tons of like white noise essentially of like all the things and a friend who's an energy worker was like then turn off communal voice and I was like oh whoa but she was like yeah just like turn it off. So literally I went around my house going, shut up, shut up (laughs) for like two weeks. And eventually I just figured out how to do it like naturally. So that was, that was priority one for me, uh, in 2019 was learning how to take a turn off communal voice. Uh, cause I was just like constantly channeling everybody all the time. Uh, but now it's like, oh, I literally cannot have a cohesive thought in my brain. I probably shouldn't strategize for anybody right now. I know that I have that scheduled. It says I'm going to work on that thing. I am not going to work on that thing. And I'm going to go hop in the bathtub and hippopotamus-like. It is hippopotamus-like. 
Um, like I just, for some reason, water fixes it for me. And they joke about that with kids. Like if they're having a tantrum and you're having struggles, feed them or putting them in water. That's the case for me. I either eat brownies or I'm in the water or drinking wine. <laughs> I think that's fair. And I, I applaud all three. You can do all three simultaneously. There will be no judgment in this space. <laughs> No judgment at all. None, none. <laughs> so yes, but so definitely learning how to prioritize, like, and catch, like, catch yourself, like, figure out what your, I don't want to say triggers, but like your your points of where you're like, well, shit, if I keep going, there's a ledge there, and I need to back the fuck up. And I, it has gotten so much better in the past six months. Um, a, actually, like, acknowledging that shit's not always pretty. Like, I, this is a forefront of content that's coming, but I essentially said, like, chaos is the norm. Controlled chaos is, like, I what you're shooting for at this point. Like, because um, everything's chaos. I can't control what's going to happen, but I can kind of have a system in place to control the chaos as much as possible. Um, and that's pretty much where I'm at. It's like, oh, that's great. Should hit the fan, guys. <laughs> and I've like gotten to that point where I'm like, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll fix it. Like it, because it used to be, shit's hit the fan and I gotta fix it now. And now I'm like, we'll schedule that later. You know, this is when we can get to it. And like when you get to the point of like zero fucks given, like, that and you're like, I'll schedule that when I have time. And you can say that without feeling like an asshat. Like you're like, oh, I have elevated where I am. This is good. Like, so um, and I don't mean that like I don't care about my clients. I love them all. Like, I just mean like I don't take on their like their sense of emergency as my own, like unnecessarily. I know that it's not a, a big emergency because I know that the little the little numbers and the dots are all in the wrong places in a specific spot and I'll get to it. They think like 17 hours of work has to be done. And I'm like, it's just two seconds. It's okay. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many tech support calls we have received just on that alone. Like the cow, it's a couch burner. As I have said on a previous podcast recently, they didn't know what that reference meant. If you're a Kentucky fan, you know what that means. It's a couch burner. Like this is the end. We can't, we can't go. There's nothing surpassed this moment besides dark emptiness. And I'm just like, <laughs> just give yourself a whole 15 minutes of grace. I promise you there is life on the other side of that dark, empty void. Um, it may in fact be Galaga. Um, so it's one of those things where I'm telling people all the time, like, don't feel like you're, you know, you're at that, at that point. I love that. I love that story. I love that analogy so much. So I just, I treasure all these moments. We are so doing coffee or more wine after this. More like, wine. More wine. <laughs> Bravo. More yeah. wine. I just love it. But yes, I totally relate to this on so many different levels. And I hope other women entrepreneurs who are actually in need in that place. Maybe they are in that couch burner place. Y'all right. need to be hitting Molly up. What are y'all doing? Like, she's going to fix this. <laughs> yeah, she's here. Let she's me gonna, fuck it. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, so as we kind of go more into, like, priority um, from your industry, which is very similar to my industry, um, mm -hmm. what encouragement can you offer listeners who are seeking to make better priorities in 2022? I would say whatever you had prior to listening to this podcast, whatever was on your list, I would prioritize actually reflecting on each of the things that you had on your list and seeing if they're your priorities or someone else's. Because I don't know how many times I've heard people be like, well, I need to do this this year. Why? Well, so-and-so said, okay, but if you don't feel like that's important to you, it's not important at all. You know, so that is priority number one is making sure that they're actually your priorities. Very important. I mean, if it's your kid, that's probably not your priority, but it is your priority in a different way. 
but besides that, um, <laughs> like I don't prioritize Legos. He does. So, um, but beyond that, it's okay. I need to figure out what my number one priority is. And almost all the time, the number one priority is I need to be true to myself. Almost always. Because if I, if the goal is personal, I need to spend more time with my family, then that falls under being true to yourself and saying, no, I can't take on another client because I want to be at my kids, whatever, or my partner's party or whatever. I don't know. We don't do parties anymore. It's called, but what, you know, um, <laughs> I feel like I have bad examples right now. Um, but if it's a business priority and it's, I want to make six figures consistently this, you know, like I want to consistently make the money I need to make to hit six figures this year or seven figures this year. That still comes back to being true to yourself because if you're pricing yourself too low, if you are taking on more clients than you can handle, if you are taking people that just make you want to slam your head in a car door, those things are not true to yourself and it like all falls under there. So I would really say, make sure you're prioritizing your truth. I'm going to let Cicely keep taking notes over here because I know she's like, <laughs> um, I love this. I love this so much. I think priorities, are, again, priorities for yourself is really what's helping you open other and unlock and open other mm -hmm. opportunities for yourself because you are focusing on yourself. People think that as a sometimes the selfish move, um, but I think that is the the furthest from the truth. I think mm -hmm. it's important if, if you're not focusing on yourself, who the hell else is? Um, so right. it's one of those situations where you know you know what you need to do. Just be um, be brave enough to take the uncertainty to take yeah. it on. I think that is a huge uh, concept that we have for ourselves as women, especially in tech and especially in the creative industries where we're putting on all these hats or putting on all this extra armor that we feel like we actually need to wear in order to survive the day. And I really, I'm, I'm going to go straight forward, you know, for the Game of Thrones, you can take off all the things and still be a star. You know, you can yeah. just be in your raw form and still be, the amazing fire kindred spirit, whatever you need to have to get through the day, to get the job done, to go to the next goal, to reach the next step. So right. I, I, I love that, that you, you completely mirrored exactly kind of what I'm hoping people are going to get out of this episode, which is to really take, take heart and uh, rely on the people who know the skills better than you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's like the thing too is like I, I, there's a big crowd of delegate 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 to the point of harming your business because people delegate too soon because they don't know what to delegate because they never built anything to delegate and so when you are being true to yourself, if somebody says delegate and you feel cringy inside, not because you're scared of letting go of your baby, because your business is your baby, not because of that, but because it feels icky and sickening to you, then don't do it. If somebody says, you know, take on 14 new clients at, you know, the lowest price you can think of, and that feels icky to you, I mean, it should feel icky to you, but if it feels icky, don't do it. You know, if somebody says charge, you know, 18 times what you're charging now because you're undercharging and it feels icky to you, don't do it. Like, that's my biggest advice is like, trust your gut. Like your intuition as a business owner, if you don't have any, you need to figure out how to get some, <laughs> hire somebody who has some, if you can afford it and it doesn't feel icky. Um, but, you know, like that is something that, people who are moving up in business and expanding, they are trusting their intuition. They are doing things that align for them. I don't, that doesn't mean I agree with everything that they're doing, but it's what they need to do for themselves. And that's okay. So. I was given Cicely space. Sorry. Oh, no, you're <laughs> fine. 
<laughs> you jump on in here, girl. You go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, ooh, that was good stuff in there. And I was just organizing some of the notes. Um, but through through prioritizing yourself and really just prioritizing kind of the things that are important to you and the things that matter to you, what do you think has been the biggest shift since doing that? So since mm. realizing like, hey, I'm not doing, like I'm not putting things that I'm aligned with or I'm not putting things that matter to me first. When you started to do that, like what is, what results did you see? And like, what was kind of like your aha, aha moment where you're like, okay, this is what I need to be doing the whole time. Oh, so many. Uh, for one, I stopped drinking as much wine. Um, two, um, <laughs> I mean, I still drink it just not as much. Um, I was sleeping more. Uh, for the first couple of years of my business, I was sick all the time. And we discovered that I was sick because I was working myself dead. And the things that I was getting sick from, I was getting chest and throat uh, and ears. So not listening to yourself, not using your voice and feeling like suffocated by the things that were happening around you. Those were all like emotional, energetic things that were falling on me. And so not being sick all the time has been great. Not missing work all the time. Like last April, I was out for four weeks. I could not breathe. I could not get out of bed. I slept all the time. I couldn't work. It was awful. And it was all because we had just we had expanded super fast. I had hired people really quick. And because I didn't have everything in place, because I am my own worst person and I don't follow my own advice. Um, and I didn't have all the systems in place. Like I had some automations and I like was like, yeah, that is what the process is, but I didn't have it written down. Um, so when I was sick, people couldn't do it. And like, it literally snowballed for eight months like just kept going. So when I finally like took a step back and was like, okay, everything is shit and hell right now. Anyway, we're going to blow it up again. And I like always do that. And like, I'm, everybody's always like, you work best when everything is as fucked up and shitty as possible. And I'm like, yeah, I do do my best thinking then. Um, <laughs> But like, I'm a reassessor. I'm always like analyzing and reassessing and going, oh, we could do that better. We could do that better. We could do this better. And it's part of what makes me great at what I do is because I can connect the dots and see all the puzzle pieces that nobody else can see. I'm like, did you ever watch The Good Doctor? Okay. You know, when he's like solving a puzzle and he's like seeing it all, like literally that is my life. Like, I'm like, oh, we're going to just like, the sales funnel is around me. That is <laughs> badass. That is awesome. You know? So that's kind of like how I, I see these things. And so when I took a step back and I was like, it should tell, um, I was like, okay, well, we need less clients. Bottom line. We have old, because I had people who I had grandfathered and grandfathered and grandfathered and grandfathered. And so, you know, you have a client that you like, clients that you love and you care about and you want to help them, but you, the, you're putting all your hard sweat, heart, tears, energy, everything into the work, but like you never raised the prices to go up with when you realized how much work you're putting into it. I was the person that resisted toggle, just not even to like charge hourly, like tracking hours, just just for my own sanity to know how much I worked. And the moment I did that, I realized I was working 60 hours a week. And that was just the parts where I was pressing the button. Right. Mm -hmm. That didn't include when I was in the shower thinking up sales strategies, because that's who I am. Um, <laughs> you know, or Guilty. all the other moments. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's just part of being a strategist or a graphic designer. You're always like that subway tile that's slightly off kilter has inspired me to create an entire new brand logo. You know, like, out loud. yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is our life. Um, <laughs> but so I blew it up and I like slowly just like as people ended, I would send emails and be like, 
So this is what the new prices are going to be. I can help you find a new person or here's the contract for the new amount. And people kind of fell off and it wasn't a hurt feelings thing. It was, we've kind of outgrown each other in different ways and it felt natural. And I just kept doing that and kept doing that and kept doing that. And right now we are at the low, I think our client load is pretty low, like retainer wise right now, because we have people in a different we're in a different realm now because people are in one-on-one -on -one strategy and that's it. Like people just want to sit and talk with me for an hour and get some notes at the end. Like, okay. You know, um, cause they have their own teams. They don't need my team. They have their own team. And I, I say, do these things. And they say, Hey team, do these things. And they come back and they're like, the team did this here. <laughs> what do I do next? You know? And so I've grown my skill set has grown and mm -hmm. we've grown. And so roundaboutly answering your question, um, <laughs> like it was just a lot of little things of becoming more self-aware and more confident and like not to, not to say that imposter syndrome has disappeared in any of this whatsoever. I literally had an hour call with my coach yesterday going, I feel great and confident, but does that make me an imposter? <laughs> Because like you gain confidence in what you're doing, but then you're like, well, shit, am I running into the level where like the imposter syndrome goes away and now I am the imposter? Like, where am I at? Like, <laughs> like then I just become a neurotic fool, but you know, it's okay. It's I think life. anyone on that, on that train becomes a neurotic fool. <laughs> like, right. That's kind of how, but that's, that's part of it. Right. <laughs> well, and I feel like being transparent about that as, you know, being in like, I feel like there's like this entrepreneurial, like, I don't want to say pyramid because I don't want to associate it with a pyramid scheme, but like, there's these like levels. <laughs> there's like, you know, there's the people who are, you know, just, you know, I'm going to crochet bunny rabbits while my kid's sleeping, you know, and then there's people who are like, I hate my nine to five. I need to like side hustle a little. There's people who are like, I can't hold a nine to five. I need to full time it. And then there's people that are just so inspired to be entrepreneurs. And like, you know, as you keep going, you grow. And I feel like I'm in not the top. I'm not the top, but like, I'm definitely upper, upper pyramid feeling. Um, and um, <laughs> feels weird. And it's just a weird place to be because I still feel like, yes, I know things, but I don't know all the things. And people look to me to know all things. I know how to find the things. But, you know, so it's just a weird place to be. And like, I think anybody who's moving along to the next part, because there's always a next part. There's never a I'm here. I'm done. Like, right. there's always a next part. I feel like anybody's going to feel awkward getting to that next, the next thing. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I'm just like a Pokemon that keeps evolving. I love it. I love it. You know, that's my goal too. I love it. Um, I absolutely am really connected to, and Cicely, you jump in here as much as you want. I, I, I'm very connected to, um, the idea of the continuous learner, right? I am very, um, attached to the idea that we as creatives were sponges, which means yes. there's a never ending capacity to obtain, um, more things. And I, I do truly believe that, um, the, the most, you know, if you, if you want to say most powerful or smartest person is not then themselves, it's the access and the privilege and all the other tools and resources that they obtain. It's the people they put around them. It's the, again, resources and tools that they use that become, that makes them so quote unquote powerful or so, so important. And I think it's really important for us as women to understand that our power is not necessarily in necessarily um, being the richest person in the room. It's really being rich in resources. It's being yeah. rich in community. It's being rich in, in thought processes. It's being rich in those particular areas. Those are the things that um, we can accumulate over time and become very, very prosperous in the rest of our life. It may not necessarily show up in the, you know, I don't know, uh, what I'm trying to think of a fancy car. I was going to say Dodge Charger, but I know that's not it. Tesla. <laughs> Bentley, a Tesla. Maserati. Maserati. There we go. <laughs> Lamborghini. There we go. That's not my forte. <laughs> I'm cool if I just get the, the Toyota Sienna. Like, I'm okay with that. Um, 
So I, I, I so strive for that. And I hope more women really catch on to what you were saying, Molly, just in general, like it's not really, you're never going to be t t at the top, you know, not, not to say that you're not going to be at the top as a winner, but just never feeling like you're, there's a cap on the right. level of what you can achieve. That's what I was really trying to get at. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll edit that out later. So it's, <laughs> It's just I, one of those things that I felt very passionate to say, yes, Molly, like, yes, you're doing, you're, you're holding it down for all of us back here. I totally, rah, rah, rah. I totally get it. Um, and two, like, I, I also want to kind of like in, embellish on this idea too, that we as women sometimes falter from, I, I won't. And we start putting these pronouns in front of the ability of doing something, you know, we say, I, I can't get to the next level. I won't get to the next level. And it's like that, you know, that echo chamber again, we tell ourselves we may not, we dress like we can achieve or we'll, you know, we'll say the things that people want to hear, but deep down internally, we're still telling ourselves, no, there's a cap, there's a door, there's a wall, there's mm -hmm. a mountain. And, you know, like, as you said, in your realm, it's so much easier to help another person navigate through that process of knocking down those barriers and allowing them to understand that you can, you can go much higher than where you are now. And I'm here to help you supply you, support you, encourage you to get to those next steps through strategy. So yeah, yeah I really and that's, like that. That's something we, I talk about a lot is like, everybody feels like they've dug this hole that's like higher than I can reach. And I'm like, but I'm here to tell you, like, you're like maybe at a hole this deep and I just need you to like lift your foot. Yes. Like, move forward, lift your foot and keep going. Like, because everybody's like, the website's not done. I haven't done it. And I'm like, <laughs> who the fuck cares? Like, just send a proposal, please. Just like. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my word. And I, everybody, I used to have really, really long hair. And so like, they would always know in the meeting when I was about to like drop it because my hair would move and I would like, it would go on top of my head. And um, now it's sh shorter and it doesn't do that. Um, but I'm a very expressive person. I don't know if you like noticed or anything, but um, so everybody always knows when I'm like about to do something. Cause I'm like, <sighs> you know, like in a meeting, <laughs> like they're like, oh God, Molly's gonna tell me I'm wrong. And it's not that you're like, anybody's wrong. It's just like, you convince yourself that there, like you said, there's a glass wall, there's a mountain you gotta climb. And I'm like, Julie Andrews climbed the mountain. Can you just climb the damn mountain with Julie? Like, um, shit, she had all those kids with her. Like, I mean, come on, you, you can do it. They refer to me as Fraudeline Maria because I have four. So it's just kind of like, it makes me laugh all the time because I'm like, all right, Fraudeline, what are you going to do today? <laughs> like, how yeah. are you going to hold me on the fort today? Yeah. And it's just, you know, as we convince ourselves that these like things are giant, like I was talking about my coach being like, Molly, you're just delaying. It was, <laughs> here's the thing that I was delaying on for one whole year. I have wanted to launch a download shop to help newbie entrepreneurs who aren't ready to pay for my like group strategy or my one-on-one -on -one strategy. Cause I want to help all the people. I cannot help all the people one-on-one -on -one or in group strategy. Cause that would be insane. So the only way I can do that is by offering downloads or whatever. Now I said that I don't like cookie cutters. So I had convinced myself that in order to launch this shop, I had to caveat everything. So here's a template. But if you're a service-based provider, then you need it. This, you know, that you might want to look at it this way. And if you do it this way, you might also want to think this way. And if you're not a visual learner, you need to think about it this way. And if you're an auditory learner, like this. And if you're autistic, maybe this would actually help. And if you have ADHD, like I was trying to like cover all my bases because I wanted to not feel like a box. Like, I was like, but it's not authentic if it's a box. And she was like, it's a template. What they do with it is none of your business. I was like, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was a mind That's all blown. I could do. And Mama P was like, 
you you would have told me the same damn thing you know like <laughs> and it's true and literally since then like every time i'm working with a client i'm like we have this resource one minute i have to write something down and then like i'll go over and be like add this to the shop so like in the next couple of weeks, we're just taking all the resources we use and like put, they're just sitting there, but I had built this wall. I had like, cause, cause of bullshit. Yeah. And we do it. We do it to ourselves too much. We, us as women, we do it yeah. to ourselves too much. We just keep putting the wall, the mohill or something in front of us. Let's do less of this in 2022. Can we not? Can we like, please work hard on Removing the mountain, the mohill for 2022. Yes. Like whatever mental roadblock that is. I'm just really glad I figured it out on February 2nd. Hey, it's it's actually January. You know, that's, that's your month one. Is <laughs> true. You were a second day into the new year, so why why are you even upset about it? I mean, yeah, you're way true. ahead of most people. Good point. <laughs> I'll just read it's the lunar new year too. So like really, like I joke yeah. about it because February 1st is my birthday, but it's also the lunar new year. So technically for some people it is the new year. So we're sticking with it. <laughs> well, and supposedly, like, oh, put my woo hat on again. Um, it's like some like mega energetic portal between now and the 22nd. So mm -hmm. like you're supposed to have like major epiphanies, like all of these great things are supposed to happen. If you're open to them, which I am universe, I am open. We're open. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Receive. Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. I'm still cracking up how you said woo light. Like that just that oh. sent me to another realm. Cause you're like, I'm not like, you know, crazy woo. I'm not into the crystals yet, but you're like, that was kind of woo light. And I'm like, it's, yeah. it was the most ridiculous, best thing I've heard. It was great. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like to claim my labels. It's okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm also laughing that yours says you, you have bougie on your thing. Because I, so we we designed our house recently. And somebody was like, it looks like Pinterest. I was like, I'm bougie and I'm basic. What do you expect from me? Like, at least I admit it and I know it. I like my pumpkin spice lattes. I like my black and white kitchen with gold accents. Like, can you just please? Like, <laughs> you got to get in where you fit in. And you know, once you know where you fit in, then you, you take it and run with it. Yes. It's always a joke. Like, I have like the champagne taste on a beer budget, but it's like yeah. Colt 45 beer. It's not even like good beer. It's like the malt liquor is my actual budget, but my taste is like Cristal, like Dom yeah. Perignon. Like, that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> See, that's what I aspire to, right? So as right. long as I keep those expectations high, then that's my priority is, <laughs> is aspiring to be better, to be more, to be more luxurious. That is my, yeah. that's my priority. <laughs> but like, that's a good point though. Like you, where you are now has zero bearing on where you want to be. So who the hell cares? Like if you want Cristal and you're going to drink the malt liquor, like it is Cristal and you're going to pretend it's Cristal, like who cares? Like go for what you want, dream big, do what you want. Like, and that goes back to prioritizing your truth because then you know, like it's a whole cycle. Yes. It's cyclical. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I um, love that. And we talk about like, we always were into like positive self-talk. Like we know we can't be positive all the time. You have to, you know, realize when you need to cry, when you need to be angry, when you need to kind of sit with your feelings. But we are, we are and have always been big into speaking things into existence. And we have kind of been reflecting a couple months back about how like I had gone on, I had prioritized like, you know, some new experiences in my life. And I had gone on a travel nursing contract for the first time. Ever. I left my husband, left my child, the dog, the cat, like everybody, mom and dad, everybody's home. And I just went and I was like, you know what? I hadn't realized it at the time, but I was like thinking back to just, you know, before I started nursing school, I, um, you know, had graduated from college with the baby on the hip. My son was, I think, nine or 10 months old when I graduated with my undergrad degree. And the most amazing thing, I was just like, it comes full circle. So I had said this years ago. So my son is 12 now for reference. And I'd said this, oh. I've only, I've, yeah, he, he old, he's an old baby. <laughs> and 
he was on my hip, not when he was 12, when he was 10 months old. <laughs> so in that, um, you know, a little over the decade when that happened, like I didn't have any interest in becoming a nurse until literally, it was like eight years ago. So no interest in anything medical prior to that, like leave me alone. I've kind of entertained the thought of maybe being like um, an obstetrician or a midwife or something, but like I, it wasn't like I was not paying attention to that. I was trying to be an award-winning journalist, didn't have time for none of that. So um, when I looked back, like I was in Minot, North Dakota of all places, and I was reflecting on my life as your woo-woo girl likes to also do. And I was like, this is absolutely nuts. Like I was a single mom for 10 years and looking, I dreamed of one day being able to travel as a nurse and to take my kid with me and to go on all these crazy adventures. And I said, here I am like living out the things that I talked about. And I was like, like mine was blown. Cause I had yeah. not looked at it that way. Like I had just gone to this adventure, like I'm going to do this. It's going to be fun. And then when you kind of sit back, it's humbling. It's beautiful. It's just, it's amazing to think about the things that we can do when we prioritize self when we prioritize our goals. And really when you speak about the things that you want to do and you speak it into existence, you put that, you put action behind those words. So yeah. that is always like my number one thing that I am a testament to like that positive talk and that if you say something, stick to your guns and I guarantee a year, six months, two years, whatever, down the line, you're going to look back and be like, whoa, like I'm, I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I feel like uh, a lot of times people are like, I've spoken it, it didn't happen the next day. And like, they give up on it. And it's like, right. uh, that's, that's not how this works. <laughs> That's not how this works. Like you gotta put in the effort. <laughs> you have to like, yeah, you have manifesting doesn't mean sit back on your ass and wait for it to show up on your lap. It's not like well, I would say it's not like the post office, but they don't deliver shit like really. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not like Amazon. Um, so like I feel like a lot of people kind of give up. They're like, I'm gonna start this business, and they're like, it's failing. And I'm like, you're two months in. You're two months in. Let's give it some time. Things grow. Or like Pinterest. Pinterest is the worst one. I started a Pinterest. I pinned something and nothing happened. Yeah, guys, it's a long, it's a long, long game. Long game. Yeah, you know, it's it the is. same thing. And it's so I feel like people just don't expect things to take time. Mm. And growing a business living your truth, doing all these things, peeling back the onion layers like your Shrek. Like uh, it's all time consuming. It's a process. Like you're not going to know there's another layer to the onion until you peel back the first layer. Like we don't have a knife that chops off all the layers so you can see them all. Like you have to peel them off one by one. So like I, so I love that you spoke that but that it actually did take a process and it still happened because I feel like that's what people need to hear is that yes, you manifested it. Yes. You talked about it. Yes. You dreamed about it. You probably saw it in your head, like all the things, but it took time and you still had to go to school to become a nurse. You still had to, you know, hone that skill. You still had to do the things to get you there. Um, Cause that's, that's like the biggest chunk is people want things instantly and it doesn't work that way. It's such a huge part of our culture too. I mean, Cicely can totally attest to this, that we're in that age of insta now, you know, we didn't want it. We don't want it tomorrow. We want it yesterday. And we have to keep telling, yeah, we, I feel like the, <laughs> the girl in the Wonka chocolate factory, you know, I want it now. Like, that's what I feel like. <laughs> I'm going to stop my feet. I'm going to tell my daddy to pay it off. I'm going to do all the things. And I'm just like, girl, we don't have that in 2022. Like, we just don't have that. So um, coming into that perspective of, you know, what it takes to actually build the work, right? To yes. do that work. So, yeah, I really love that. And, of course, Cicely, as she always says, um, you know, the work on self is what we have to um, think about. And we kind of don't formulate in our heads how that's supposed to look or, or or take up space for us. But we have to do that work on ourselves so that we can take up those spaces and we can move those mountains the way that um, we we dream them to move. Yes. So, yeah, I really I'm really attached to that. Um I guess we're at this point now where we can move on to, I guess, our flash questionnaire. Cicely, are we up for that? What is this? 
Yeah. Give me one second. I'm gonna let my cat in. She's meowing yeah. at the door because if I don't, you're gonna hear in the background. So give me one. So me with I, you. Know. <laughs> I swear, every call I get on, there's a cat or a dog that is like needs to see me or something. Or a baby or, or something. Yeah, or a baby or something. Yes, it never fails. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, this is like the one of the best parts about um, just in general being. Be, doing 22 this way um, for me, I absolutely love the fact that I got to bring on, we had a um, earlier guest in the kickoff of our season who was also a creative and just having more people in those same similar spaces of mind, mindset, mm -hmm. having people with the same kind of uh, calculated uh, feel of strategy, I think is so helpful. I think that's something that I didn't even know that I thought that I needed so much in 2022. So I, this this season is so kind of already uh, weaving this special web already. So I'm just really Yay. excited that you're here, Molly. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. um, for people, before we get into the, the flash questionnaire part, I, I really want people to find a way to connect with you um, outside of this podcast. How can people awesome. find you and hire you? Okay. Well, if I'm on social media at the Molly Hicks, all the places, Twitter and TikTok, I just observe. Um, but I'm there. Uh, <laughs> um, and then my website is mollyhicks.com and you can reach out to me there. And I am so excited to see you all. I love it. Yeah. Y'all please do. Um, I follow you now on, on Insta. So, um, I definitely will be continuing to shout your name from there. And then you'll probably also like for people who are really interested in understanding more about strategy and how mm -hmm. Molly can really like boost your dividends, please continue to follow her on her website. Go to, sign up, take two seconds of your life and sign up for her bloody email for crying out loud. Just do it. I, you'll get a 30 page book to help you <laughs> with your client experience. Oh, like, I mean, oh, if, that, <laughs> <laughs> if that wasn't the best freebie ever, gosh dang it, Molly. I love it. Um, yes. Yeah, so please do follow her. I love the fact that you are here, Molly. Thank you so much for your time and your energy. Awesome. I'm really excited about this questionnaire. Cicely will run you right through it. Um, be honest. Okay. Which is, but that makes it more fun. Okay. Okay. Yes. And you're gonna have you're gonna see the cat make cameos in between. So totally. just wave, wave to her when she comes on screen. But oh, um, <laughs> she's so sweet. But um, okay, so it's just gonna be the first thing that comes to your mind, and here we go. Okay. Something new you've learned in the past year, life lesson, hobby, fun fact, etc. How to scroll TikTok. I <laughs> I like it. We'll take it. Your favorite <laughs> vacation or getaway spot? Oh, it's either Cancun or Disney World. Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> sweet snacks or savory snacks? Savory. Nice. I already know the answer to this one, but Harry Potter or Star Wars? <laughs> oh, that's a that's that's hard to say. Oh, I thought I knew the answer. <laughs> yeah, literally, I am staring at a picture of the Millennium Falcon and the next wing. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, um, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I think that's fair. <laughs> I don't know. I love them both. <laughs> She's conflicted. I like it. Um, digital books or physical books? Physical books. I think, what is that? We have, we have one person that said digital so far in four seasons. That's awesome. Um, if you, if you can go back in time, where would you go and whom would you see? I have this thing for Tudor England and I really don't know why, <laughs> but like, there's something about like being a fly on the wall for all of that. Like, I don't know. So I, I think that's Tudor awesome. England. Yeah. That's Little really cool. Buff, yeah. I know. I really like I was like, that's one of the most like creative answers we've heard. I love that. I mean, Outlander also helped me really like that side of things too, <laughs> but that's a totally different story. That's <laughs> um, your love language or languages. My love language is I love receiving words of affirmation. Awesome. But I give acts of service. That's very interesting. I like that. And then um, the best part of being a grown-up. I 
can eat whatever the fuck I want when I want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can buy whatever you want when you want it. And mom yeah. can't say anything about it. I love it. <laughs> That's true too. Yeah. Um, Danielle. <laughs> I have on my wish list a giant. I'm also a Trekkie. So instead of having these three things here, you can get a light up mural that looks like the computer of Voyager. Stop. I love it. That you is have awesome. To share this link. I will put it in the, okay, in the comments. On Etsy. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Trekkie and I usually have my pen right here. And it's not on right now because I oh let my, my hair down. So well, I was like, it's not going to be seen. I'm going to take it off. And then you mentioned that. I'm like, and yeah. here we go. I literally have a lesson almost every week that I'm teaching on how Star Trek has taught me X, Y, Z. I love that. That's awesome. My, oh my, my life philosophy is based off Star Trek. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> works. This yeah. is how I felt about um, Seal. No, I'm telling my age. Um, so if you're a fan of the musician Seal, I have a, a very similar um, analogy. I use the, his top songs as an analogy to um, my design career. Actually, I really do like deep down. Oh like I, I need to publish it probably in, in May for Mother's Day just for shits and giggles. But yeah, fun stuff. I love yeah. this, Molly. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for your energy today. Um, this has been surreal. Like I it's love, been awesome. I love how powerfully energetic every episode is really just building and building and building and so i'm just so thankful that this episode with you has been so transformational for so many of our listeners oh thanks i'm so excited to have been here so thank you for having me thank you so much like she said your energy unparalleled and i truly enjoyed it and as the mother as mothers of the children who are neurodivergent we really appreciate the representation i love the quirkiness like my son, you know, we just had a conversation about him being weird. I'm like, it's fine because I'm weird too. We're all a little bit weird. I like weird. If you're not weird, you're probably not for me anyways. So right. I'm into it. Yes. So thank you so much for that. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being you. Yes. Oh, I love it. Thank you for being you. All right. For the rest of you all um, who are not like gushing as the way that we are. Um, thanks for listening to the More Than Graphics podcast. Um, continue to subscribe and follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. Send us your feedback or face on Facebook or Twitter on how our life stories and virtual safe spaces are helping you navigate, empower, or simply encourage you. And of course, be sure to check out mtgthepodcast.com and subscribe to our emails for exclusive behind the scenes moments. So from all of us, until next time. Bye.